In today's video, I'll be showing you the easy steps to draw a Japanese chrysanthemum. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys a few little tips and tricks and a few ways to draw a Japanese style chrysanthemum. We're going to cover some really basic steps and some easy ways to put together this chrysanthemum design. So for those of you who have followed me for a little while, you guys probably know that I've already done a how to draw a chrysanthemum video. Today's video is going to be completely different to that one in the sense that we're going to go in and break down each and every detail of the chrysanthemum so that you guys get a full understanding on how to draw these and then we're going to put them together into a complete design so let's get straight into it by going to the overhead okay everyone welcome back to the table so like i said we're drawing a japanese style chrysanthemum today and i'm going to go break this down into steps to make it really simple and easy and so that it's a step-by-step -step process that you guys can follow every time you want to draw one of these and it's going to make it really simple and easy for you guys to draw so to start with, I've got an A4 sheet of sketch paper. It's actually A3 folded in half. And I've also got this little sketchbook. This is gonna be for our final sketch before we transfer it to watercolor paper. And this is gonna be so I can show you the different uh, techniques that we're gonna use, but we're gonna put that aside for now. So we're gonna start this drawing with a mechanical pencil, like usual. And I've also got an eraser handy just in case we need it. And we're gonna start by drawing the core of our chrysanthemum flower or the center of our chrysanthemum by dropping in a circle. Just like this, and you're gonna put that in about the center of the page, or if you're adding this to his design, then you're gonna put it wherever you want to put it in your composition. Now to start adding petals to this, we're basically going to draw in these little curved shapes coming from this center point on the bottom, curving around, following the contour as though this is a sphere. Rounding off. Coming back out nice and wide and then slowly tapering back down to our starting point. And now we've done one of the petals. And you're basically gonna repeat this process overlapping some of the petals and pretty much weaving in the petals wherever you'd like. Now there's like 40 different wild species of chrysanthemum and there are over a thousand species in total of chrysanthemum flowers and they are endlessly different there are so many different types of chrysanthemums that it's pretty much impossible to you know say what exactly a chrysanthemum looks like when drawing them because there are so many different varieties that it really gives you uh, a lot of room to sort of play around with and make the design your own of course if you're trying to draw a specific style of chrysanthemum then you'll want to have a certain method for that style. So as you can see, I'm just going ahead and dropping in these petal shapes. And they're just these basic curved lines with slightly pointed ends. And they're a little bit wider towards the end of the petal and a little bit tapered back towards the base of the petal. And you're gonna layer these up on the first half of your sphere. Of course, you're going to want to start doing some of the petals from the other direction. They're just coming from the other side and layering up some of these petals as well. One thing that's important to know when drawing chrysanthemums is to make sure when you layer your petals in, if you want your chrysanthemum to look nice and full, you want to make sure you don't leave any big gaps like this. This one we're leaving because we're going to fill it in later but you wanna go ahead and try and get as much coverage as you can with your overlapping petals. And in this way, it looks nice and full and it's not you know, all full of gaps and that sort of thing. So I like to make my chrysanthemums look really full and uh, bulbous, I suppose would be the right word for it. And so I make sure that I don't leave too many gaps when creating my petal structure. When you get to this point, you want to start drawing the inner petals of the flower. So basically you're going to do the exact same shapes on the outer side of them and then drop them back in to the flower. 
So you're basically going to draw in these petal shapes, just coming in and then dropping down. And this is actually the inside of the petals at this top area here. So I like to leave the bottom of these petals a little bit separated from this top edge of petals. This way I can tell the difference of them when I go in to do the inking and the coloring. And it just makes them look, you know, gives the image a little bit more depth and make things look a little bit nicer. Okay, now drawing in the uh, core of the chrysanthemum there is pretty straightforward. You're basically covering a sphere from the bottom up and wrapping around with these curved shapes. And then once you get to the point at which your chrysanthemum is open, the top of your flower, we add in these petals at the back that extend a little bit past our circle. And basically that's the inside of the petal area inside here. Now I'm going to go ahead and run you through the four different types of outer petals that we're going to be doing in this video. Okay, so a really good way to practice chrysanthemum flowers is to go ahead and learn the dip different shapes of the petals, learn how to customize them to add different styles to them and make them more or rest less realistic, depending on how you want them to look. And then you can go ahead and just add those into your, you know, already started design or uh, future designs that you plan on doing. So it's a good way to practice by start, uh, starting to learn the different types of petals. So I'm going to do four different petals for you. These are the outer petals that wrap around our core. So number one is what I call like the basic fold over or the C-shaped petal. Basically that's going to come up and around. And you're going to cut it off halfway or a little bit more than halfway to create the tip of the petal. and then you join it up with another line. And so now that petal looks like it's folded over itself. So this is the inside of the petal and it's folding towards us in this direction. To add a little bit of style to this so it's not so basic, you can go ahead and start with the same structural foundation, drawing in your fold over, just like this. Now what you wanna do is Bring up a little bit of a lip on this side and join that into the top part of your petal there. And then you can make the other side a little bit rough as well. And this is going to add a little bit more detail. So now this is the inside of the petal. This folds over this way, just like it did in the first example. And we've got this little edge here where the edge of the petal is actually curled over slightly. And this is mirrored on the other side by this sort of wavy uh, stuttering line. And that gives it a little bit of texture and a little bit more detail depending on the style of artwork that you're doing. Jumping into the second type of petal that we're gonna be using in this particular chrysanthemum and for all the chrysanthemums that you're gonna draw is we're gonna do an S curve petal. Well, that's what I like to call it. So basically coming up with an S curve. These don't have to go up, you can do them in any direction coming out wide with a curve and that's going to link back in to our original S curve and then we come to here and double up on our line. So this is the inside portion of the pedal and it folds over in this direction. Okay so this is the outside part of the pedal. To add more detail to this you bring up our S curve we drop this line back, but instead of joining it into this line, we add a bit of texture to the edge there. And then on the other side, we add a little bit of texture to that line. So now this is the inside of our petal and it still curves around in this direction. Third type of petal that we're going to draw, I call a straight fold over. So basically you're gonna do a nice straight line just off on an angle like that with a slight curve to it. A very, very slight curve, but it's mostly straight. From here, you're gonna bring up a line. It's gonna come out, have a little bit of texture in the middle there and join to the tip. And then off the other side of that, you're just gonna double up on it to complete our curve. So now this is the inside of our pedal and the petal is folded over itself like this. Detail to this, you're gonna go ahead and draw the same petal in with the curved but sort of straight uh, diagonal line. 
instead of starting directly on the line you're going to start back here add a bit of a textured line to it come up you can add a bit of texture to this wider part as well just by adding in some curves and then the line that you drop back will have a little bit of texture and line variance to it so this is the inside of your pedal that's the curved over portion and the bigger portion is curved over and folded over in this direction okay the last type of pedal i'm going to go over is a very similar or the same uh, type of pedal that we did on our core and this is basically just a standard chrysanthemum pedal we're basically going to bring a line up and over you can add a little point to the end if you'd like add a little curve portion and taper it back it's really straightforward but of course we can go ahead and add a slight amount of detail to this as well so coming up as we curve out we can add a little bump for texture and then we can make this line coming back a little bit wavering this of course is the outside of the pedal and you're not seeing the inside of the pedal at all in this part so as you can see here, we've now got the four different types of pedal that we'll be using. They can all be of varying lengths. This is predominantly just the ends of the pedals. We've got the fold over sort of C-shaped pedal. We've got the S-shaped fold over pedal, the straight fold over pedal, and the standard sort of front pedal, I guess we'll call it, because you're only seeing the front side of the pedal and you're not seeing the inside of it. So these are the four different pedal shapes that we're gonna use. And they can of course be used um, they, they can of course be modified so you can make them longer shorter you can change the amount of detail on them you can make them really wide or you can make them really skinny depending on the type of chrysanthemum that we're drawing okay so you're probably wondering how do we translate these petals we just learned to draw to a design like this so the first type of petal that we learned was the uh, curve over or the c fold over petal so we're going to do those sort of coming from the back you're seeing the inside of these pedals at the back here. So we're also going to see the inside of this pedal, but it's gonna fold over itself towards the center. We'll add in that little bit of detail. And it's folding from the outside of the flower to the inside. So you're seeing the inner portion of that pedal and it's folding over itself and you're going to do this for most of the back portion will be this type of pedal we can of course throw in some other pedals but i like to do those on the even further outer layer so just to give you a better look at this we're going to do another recurve pedal or a curve over pedal so we're going to start with the tip we're going to come up and around so we're coming from behind our flower forward it's curving over in this direction. We're gonna add our tip. And then curve back and around. This is the inside of our pedal. And this portion is the outside of our pedal. So we're coming from behind the flower, up, around and forward and you wanna fill your flower, the back edge of your flower out with these type of petals. Okay, now once you've done your row of petals at the back, and I try to overlap them and make them sort of tangle between themselves so that they look a little more organic and natural, uh, you can go ahead and start filling in some of your other petal shapes. So I'm gonna throw in a couple of our S-curve petals. They always have to start from the base of the flower, so we're gonna come up and throw in an S-curve at the top there. And we're going to bring that curve back. So this is the inside of our pedal. And it's curving around in that direction. Just to give you a bit more detail on these S-curve pedals, we're going to do another one coming out from this side. It's going to come out like this. Fold back over itself. And then we just draw in the other side there. So that's the inside. And it folds around like that. And you can go ahead and put those all around your chrysanthemum as well. 
Okay, from here, we're gonna use a few more of our petal shape number four. These are just our standard petal shapes that we used in the beginning, but we're gonna just bring those around from the bottom like this. And you'll notice that at the bottom, there's a gap here. So this now becomes one of these recurve petals, except the end portion is a lot longer and the curve is happening towards the back. So it's now one of those C-shaped petals but the fold over is happening a lot lower on the petal. So just to give you another look at that, we're dropping in one of our standard petal shapes around our flower here. Like this, so it's the same sort of petal shape we did on the outside of our core, but there's this little gap at the bottom. So that gap becomes a fold over. So this is the inside of the petal that we're seeing and it's folding up and around like that. So now we've actually got these C-shaped petals that we did, but the fold over that's happening up here is happening at the base of our petal and it's folding up and forward around the outside of our flower. So we're gonna go ahead and put in a whole bunch of those petals. These are the outer petals on the front area of our flower. Okay, once you've drawn in all of the petals around the front, the outer petals out the front of your core, we're gonna go ahead and use petal type number three, and this is our straight and slightly curved fold over petal. So just starting at your base. We're gonna bring a relatively straight line down with a slight curve in the middle. We're gonna add in a slightly textured curve for our fold over portion and a little line at the back so this is our inside folding over in that direction and you can go ahead and put in a few of these as well if you'd like okay so step one was drawing the core step two was learning how to draw the four main types of petals and drawing our outer petals now, one thing I want to tell you is you can go ahead and make this as big or as small as your design requires. Chrysanthemums come in all different shapes and sizes. I've already explained that there's difference within the petal varieties, but with this specific type of chrysanthemum, you can go ahead and make them really large, or you can make them a bit smaller with less petals. It just depends on your design and how much coverage you need. Chrysanthemums are great for covering large areas of your design. And they're also great for interweaving through designs due to their long, thin petal shapes. Part three of this lesson will be drawing the leaves. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that now. Okay, so I've got my little sketch pad back and I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to draw the leaves. The leaves are fairly straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and drop in a curved line. This is in the direction that you want the leaf to flow in. Just like that. Now from this, you're gonna put in two smaller curved lines. We're coming back probably about halfway. Now you want these slightly shorter curved lines to flow in the same direction. So I'll just show you what that looks like. So as these arrows indicate, if this line were to continue, it would go this way. This line's going this way, and if this line were to continue, it would go down this way. So we don't have them going off the wrong direction on the page, they're all flowing in the same direction. Okay, from here, you're gonna do the same thing a little bit lower down. You're just gonna drop in two even smaller curved lines. Again, following the direction that our leaf is moving in. And now we can go ahead and start drawing in the outer edge of our leaf. So to draw the outside part of our leaves, we're gonna do these little curves like this. And whenever one part of the leaf joins the next part, there'll be a little recurve like this or a little U shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to put those on. We'll start by just adding a nice sort of general leaf shape to this. So just put in your curves like that. 
drop another one in like this and like that and same on the other side just following the general direction of those lines and then you can go ahead and add in that bumpy texture by starting at the tip of the leaf and dropping in these curves adding a little loop at the bottom where it connects up to the next part of the leaf and dropping curves down again to give the outside of our leaf texture now off of the main veins of our leaf here you can drop in some little lines that are the smaller veins of each part of the leaf depending on how you're going to color this and the style that you're doing it in will depend will basically show you how to do these center veins depending on your style and if you're ever going to draw the stem you just double up on that bottom line there and that's basically how to construct the leaf you can of course add some variants to this by adding some little nicks and cuts to the leaves little bits that may have been eaten by some small creatures or just some little holes in that to give it a little bit of variety and make them look more natural and realistic okay so we're back to our main design this is the third step which will be adding the leaves i'm going to go ahead and add those in now so coming in from underneath our flower i'll have one of the leaves coming down in this direction splitting off into our two smaller leaf sections and then splitting off a little bit again bring in our main leaf shape so we draw in the basic shape for our leaf and then I like to spin the page around and work from the tip of the leaves this just seems to give me greater control over the texture that I put on the leaves. So working from the tip, I just flip the page over. And just like that, we've drawn in one of our chrysanthemum leaves. You can go ahead and draw the rest of your leaves in wherever you'd like them to be and of course you can obscure some of the leaves some of them can be underdeveloped maybe not have as many sections to it uh, this is just the base template for them you can go ahead and modify them to suit your needs all right and as you can see we've got our finished chrysanthemum sketch here with all of the leaves different types of petals and that's pretty much how easy it is like i said this is simple steps on how to draw a chrysanthemum you draw the core in which makes it then really easy to build your petals around the core so that you can get the right shape of petals. You can have the right amount of inside versus outside of the petals and you can play with the direction and flow of some of the petals. And then of course you add in your leaves, which is step three. And we went through the process of building up those leaves. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take my watercolor paper. This is Fabriano uh, cold press watercolor paper, 300 GSM. We're gonna drop that on top of our image. And I'll just boost up our light pad a little bit here. And you can see that sketch through the light pad. So what that's going to allow me to do is trace my design through our watercolor paper to transfer our artwork ready for painting. I'm going to go ahead and use a Staedtler 1.2 size uh, fine liner to go ahead and do the biggest sort of outer lines of everything. The lines that you'd normally boost up. And I've also got my art line fine liners. I've got a number 0.5 and a 0.8 to do some of the veins in the leaves and some of the smaller details. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one outlined and I'll see you in the next part. Okay, now as you can see, I've gone ahead and outlined our design. Now I've also marked off the edges of our paper here. And we're gonna go ahead and do a simple wash. So I've just made some tea and I have a makeup brush, which I stole from my girlfriend. And we're going to go ahead and do a bit of a wash. I like using a makeup brush for this because the bristles are nice and soft and they don't leave too many streaks. 
and we're just going to do a nice wash over the whole thing okay once your little background wash has dried you can remove the masking tape from the edges this will leave you with a fairly clean border we had a bit of a trouble spot down here but that's why i like traditional handmade art so it doesn't matter too much if there's little mistakes like that that's what makes it handmade and makes it look handmade i should say we're going to start by using some vivid red orange from our liquitex range here along with this i have a glass of water this is mostly for washing the brushes out and occasionally i use it for a bit of blending and i've also got my lining brush or my inking brush and my blending brush with a slightly wider set of bristles on it for more coverage okay the way that i want to color this is i'm going to go ahead and take that orange red color that we've got or that red orange color that we've got load my brush up and paint in the bottom area of the petals towards the top once we're nearly at that end area you can take your blending brush and gently blend that color out towards the tip of the petal just like that and you're going to go ahead and do this for all of the petals for the outside part of the petal we're leaving the inside for now and we're just painting the outer part of all of our petals coming up with our red orange color to the sort of rounder part of the petal taking our blending brush and gently blending that out towards the tip of the petal. Once you've done the outside of your petals in that manner, we're taking our golden yellow or our, it's yellow orange, but it's a very golden sort of yellow. And we're gonna use that to do the inside of the petals. So to do the inside of these outer petals, you're basically gonna take your golden yellow and fill in that whole area there's no specific blending or shading that we're doing in those parts to do the center petals of your main body of your chrysanthemum put yellow at the top of the petal take your blending brush and just gently blend that down a little bit to give it a little bit of a lighter tone towards the bottom so I'll do that again for you a little bit of our golden yellow from the top. And with our blending brush, just blending it down nicely, like that. I'm gonna go ahead and paint all of the inside of our petals. All right, once you've colored in the inside of your petals, we're gonna go ahead and take some sap green, and we're gonna use that sap green to paint our leaves. Sap green's a nice dark green. Chrysanthemum leaves are fairly dark. And the way we're going to paint them is like this. So we're painting these leaves in a really simple manner. I'm going to turn the page a little bit just to make it an easier angle to work from. I'm going to take a bit of that sap green. And just paint in between our veins. Leaving a little white gap around the veins and around the outer edge of our leaf. Now this is a really simple way to paint them, but it looks really nice and visual, nice and graphic at the end. You do have to be quite careful, but if you make some mistakes, don't worry about it. Just keep going. Excellent. Okay, once we've colored in our leaves, we have a beautiful looking design here. Now, the last thing we're going to do, and this is not completely necessary, is we're going to take a red fine point Sharpie. This is the extra fine point ones. And we're going to go ahead and add inner veins to our petals. Just lightly. Drawing lines down the center of the inside of our petals
And as always, the last thing I'm doing is signing my artwork. and putting my mark on it. Just like that. And that's it my friends, that's how we draw a simple but detailed Japanese style chrysanthemum with leaves and in full color. That is it guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I think our painting came out really nice. I hope you guys give this one a go. Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below, letting me know what you'd like to see in future videos. I take requests, so let me know what you'd like to learn how to draw, and I'll try and get around to it. Other than that, I'm open to any other suggestions. Make sure to head over to Facebook at Daggett Designs. Over there is where I keep my online portfolio with all of my work in it. In addition to this, you can go ahead and flick me a message on Facebook if you want some feedback on your artwork. If you are new to my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure to hit that notification bell and give this video a thumbs up. And with that having been said, I'll see you in the next video. Keep drawing guys. Bye.